17 years ago, as a young student, I discovered that homosexuality is illegal in Uganda. After living openly gay, I was exposed in the media, and so I decided to do something about it. I decided to collect all my friends and tell them I'm going to start a movement. The movement I was going to start was an LGBT movement because I also discovered that even other parts of Africa decriminalized, I mean criminalized homosexuality. But not only in Africa, even around the world. So for me it was a shock that actually loving someone could be a crime. Then, 17 years, I've built a movement, I've built relationships with people, I have friends, but that somehow was stopped. I lost a close friend in 2011 because of the media witch hunt. The media in Uganda decided to start exposing all suspected homosexuals, calling for the hanging of anyone you find that is gay. People were exposed, many people lost their jobs, many people lost their, their housing, and indeed they even called for the hanging of one of my friends. We took the tabloids to court and won the court case. There was an injunction for them to stop exposing us because it was our right to privacy. After winning the court case, it didn't stop the damage it had already caused. Two weeks after, we began getting attacks and a close friend of mine was murdered. The media again started exposing more people, saying it was not a hate crime, after even the murderer confessing to what he had done. But what caused all this out, outcry of homosexuals in Uganda? It's the American evangelicals that came to Uganda and spread a propaganda. They caused a lot of panic in the community that we are after their children, we are recruiting their children. And so they told our parliament actually that we are taking advantage of the law because the law is life imprisonment right now. And so our parliament decided to propose a death penalty. And the bill was passed in 2014. So the president actually signed the law um, and then we went back to court and challenged the law. And we won the court case, but the damage had already been done. Over 530 of my community members right now are stuck in the camps in Kenya because of the media exposures, because of what happened to the law, because everyone now was after homosexuals. They are stuck in Kenya in the camps and they are getting attacked by other refugees because everyone is saying Uganda is not under war. What are all these Ugandans doing here? They must be running away from the anti-gay law. And now, many of my friends I began the movement with 17 years ago have all since left. I'm the only surviving founding member of the movement who is still based at home. And so I said I need to do something about this media witch hunt. It's caused a lot of problems. So 18 months ago, I decided to start an international, you know, coalition of friends calling people to support us. So I recorded myself five minutes and put on YouTube and told the world what was happening and requested them, it was crowdfunding actually, and requested people around the world who really believed that we should not be persecuted to join me. And there were demonstrations around the whole world in different cities, very everywhere. Even in Brazil, actually, we did have a surprise because of what is, is happening to, to the black community and gay people in Brazil. And so I recorded myself and told people I want to take back the media. I want to use the media to our advantage. I want us to tell our own stories so that the media stops exposing us with lies. And then I started a TV, online TV, radio, and a magazine. Then I remembered that not everyone can access internet in Uganda. And so I decided to make the magazine print. And so far I've had two, two editions that we give out around the whole country. And of course, again, the ministers were on my case saying I'm promoting homosexuality. It wasn't all that easy, but I said we need to take the stories out. And then I said, okay, apart from, from the, the radio or the TV, I know some people cannot really concentrate on just TV and radio. So I also started a blog. 
and in 18 months actually I have 1.8 million viewers people who are following what is happening and people supporting us so I just want to share with you this Today, we are privileged to share the joy of our eight month journey with the rest of the world as the first ever and only LGBTI media platform in Uganda. Due to the rampant media outings by Ugandan tabloids exposing identities of the Ugandan LGBTI community members, many faced hardships ranging from job terminations, unlawful evictions, some being disowned by their families public attacks and many more. Through these rampant media attacks on the LGBTI community members, the community was left with no solution rather than the birth of culture times to address such challenges. And through our eight month journey, we have tried our level best to provide the community members with the most reliable platform for them to express themselves through documentation, their lives, story sharing, and many more. Bombastic Magazine, a product of Kuchu Times, is compiled of real-life testimonies of Ugandan LGBTI people sharing their realities with the rest of the world. All this is aimed at creating attitude change. We therefore thank our partners, allies, Kuchu Times followers and subscribers for the love and support and we pledge to continue doing our best to update the rest of the world on LGBTI issues in Uganda, Africa and the rest of the world at large. So my dear friends, the struggle is real. Join us, support us and share the word because people can only support us if they get to know that what is happening on ground. So thank you so much.